Hey everyone, in this Photoshop tutorial, I will be talking about focal length blending. In this case, this means we will be merging two different images, with this one being our base image for basically the background, and this image for the foreground with those white flowers. If you want to give this a try yourself, you can find a link to the raw files in the description of the video, so let's go. The very first step is to just edit our base image. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape just to get some more saturation. Also, this will help restore some brightness from the darker parts of the image. Then in the basic tab, I do want to adjust the white balance a little bit. Right now, especially in the green tones, you can see we do have a slight yellow color cast. So let's bring down the temperature just so we get some more natural colors first. All right. And then we can also bring down the tint slightly but that's looking good. Then I do want to have some details in the sky, therefore I'm bringing down the highlights. And I hope this way I can reveal some of those clouds up there. And then let's bring down the shadows slightly to give the image some more contrast. And I do want to raise the whites, since we do have some room left for some more brightness. And thus we are just giving the image some more contrast. It's looking pretty good. I also do want to raise the blacks. This will give the image some kind of soft look, which works really, really well for this shot. You will probably see it better when we finish the image, but for now, let's leave it at that. Then let's also increase the texture and the clarity, just for a little more clearness. And of course, I do want to bring up the vibrance, so we have some more stronger colors in here. Perfect, that's it for the base adjustments. Now we do have to apply a few local adjustments as well, so let's do that. First off, I do want to work on the sky. In this case, we have a pretty clear contrast between sky and the landscape. So we can just say select sky and Photoshop should do a pretty good job at selecting it as, as you can see. However, I need to further adjust this mask since I only want the sky on the right side to be darker because on the left side it doesn't make sense since the light is coming from here. Let's subtract a linear gradient, just like that. And with this mask, let's bring down the blacks. Let's drop them quite a bit. And by bringing down the blacks, we are just affecting the dark parts of the sky. The white puffy clouds stay the same way. So that's exactly what we want. Then next I do want to add a little bit of glow on the left side. So for that I'm using a radial gradient. And let's make it nice and big and rotate it a little bit just to give it the direction of the sunlight. And in here for the glow as usual, I'm going to increase the blacks first. Again, this just adds the soft look to this area. Also, we can introduce some more temperature, making this whole area warmer. Perfect. And then let's maybe also decrease the dehaze, but just be careful to not overexpose anything here. That looks really, really good. And here we are done with the local adjustments, at least for the base image. Now let's continue doing some color grading in the HSL tab. I do want to work on the hue first. That means Right now in the sky, you can see a slight purple color cast. I do want to counter that a little bit at least by bringing down the purples. Just like that. All right, nice. And let's switch over to the saturation. Here you can see the green tones are a little bit overwhelming. I want to change that by bringing down the greens. All right, perfect. And I guess I'd want to bring up the blue tones. Uh, yellow tones maybe as well for those sunrise colors and let's also push the orange tones perfect i'm not touching the luminance however i do want to go into the color grading for the split toning here on the highlights i do want to go with the warm color tone of course to fit the sunrise colors so let's go with something like this and push the saturation perfect and that's pretty much it. I just want to sharpen this image a little bit. 
All right. And here we have the raw adjustment for the base image. Of course, we need to apply those settings to our second image, which we want to merge it with. So I'm holding down the shift key, click on the thumbnail down below, right click, synchronize settings, make sure to check all and hit OK. Let's switch over to the second image. Here, of course, we don't need the local adjustments because those were just for the sky. So I'm going to remove them. Instead, I'm going to apply its own local adjustments for the foreground. Means I'm using a radial gradient just over those flowers. And since I want to make them pop, I'm going to increase the highlights. I'm going to push them all the way up, which works really, really nice without affecting the shadows, of course. And then let's also add some texture and maybe some clarity. All right. I do want to add a linear gradient for the very near foreground, just like that maybe, and bring down the whites so it gets darker towards the bottom of the image. All right, and here we have the two images we want to merge. So again, let's select them both by holding down the shift key and click on the thumbnail and then just say open objects. All right, now let's do the focal length blending. This is a little bit tricky and I've tried it a few times. This is actually the first time I do get some nice results. For that, we want to switch over to the foreground image Zoom in all the way. Also make sure to activate the pixel grid. You can find that in the view menu. And here we want to go to show and here pixel grid. There it is. So now we are going to pick up the clone stem tool and then we want to copy the pixel in the bottom right corner. Therefore I'm holding down the alt key and then just click on that pixel. Then we need to switch over to our base image here it's important to create a new layer. And then I want to go zoom in the corner again. And with the clone stem tool still active, I'm going to click on the pixel in the bottom right corner again. And now let's zoom out. Then just brush over the whole image to get back the foreground from the other image. That's maybe looking a little bit strange, but don't worry. We now need to just adjust the positioning of the foreground layer. So let's drag it down first, maybe. Actually, let's bring down the opacity and try to align it a little more. It's looking okay. We can also transform this layer. So I'm going to hit Control T and I'm just going to scale it down vertically. So it kind of fits the perspective of the base image. Now you can see we are going to align it with the background right there. This is looking really, really solid already. We might need to mask out a few parts. So I'm adding a layer mask and with the black brush, I'm just going to carefully brush away a few parts of that foreground layer. So we are just creating a nicely blended image this way. The benefit of this method is you can nicely fill the foreground because as you can see in the before image, the flowers are just looking way too tiny to draw any attention to them. With this method, we can change it quite nicely. So I'm pretty happy with how things are looking at the moment. Maybe I'm erasing parts up there, just like that. And I'm slowly working my way through the image. All right, looking good. I think I'm done with the focal length blending. So I guess that's it for that part of the tutorial. Of course, I want to finish the edit, so feel free to stay. Next up, I do want to work kind of non-destructively. So I'm using the TK panel plugin to create another layer out of those two layers. And with this one, I do want to clean up the image. So let's select the spot healing brush zoom in and first off i want to get rid of that tree on the left just brushing over it perfect then there's some vignetting up there let's see if we can fix that okay and for this tree on the right side i'm going to use the clone stem tool again just like that perfect 
Now I do want to clean up the foreground a little bit as well since right now it's a little chaotic. Again I'm using the spot healing brush and I want to get rid of those yellow flowers since they are drawing a little too much attention at the moment. This is looking kind of weird. I do want to fix that spot as well. Okay, now let's see the before and after. You can see it's so much cleaner this way. Next up, I do want to enhance the glow on the left side. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light. Again, grab the brush tool, bring down the brush opacity. And I'm using a rather warm color tone as you can see right here. So let's adjust the brush size. Then I'm just painting in a little more glow coming in from the left. Again, this will help with the dreamy look. So that's looking awesome. One thing that's bothering me right now is I don't think the tree is centered. So let's apply some cropping. You can take a bit away from the foreground and maybe from the top. That is looking pretty good. Now let's work on the foreground some more. I do want to bring up the brightness of those white flowers, therefore I'm using another new layer, this time go with the overlay blending mode, since I want to dodge things and I'm using the TK panel to specifically target those flowers. You can see since, they, since those are bright, I can use the lights 2 mask to perfectly select them and apply this as a layer mask on our overlay layer. Then again I'm picking the brush and set the foreground color to white. And let's up the brush opacity. And now I'm just brushing over those flowers here to make them really pop out. Maybe we can dodge some parts in the back as well. But that looks pretty good. Okay, then let me merge another layer out of those layers. Again I'm just using the TK panel to do that. And on this new layer, I am going to check out the Nick Collection plugin. So on the right side, you can see I already have some filters set up. I am starting with the polarization effect. You can see this will just make the sky a little more contrasty and give us some more richer color tones. Then I'm going to add the Pro Contrast filter just for some more contrast. And also adjust the color cast very, very slightly. Finally, I do add some Glamour Glow, which just helps improving that soft look. And with those settings, I'm going to apply the effects. Then I might want to further adjust the size of the foreground. So let me try this. I'm going to edit, perspective warp, and I'm going to apply a grid for the upper part, then for the center part, and of course for the foreground. Once the grid is set up, I'm going to hit the warp button. Since I want to make the foreground a little bigger, I'm holding down the shift key to click on that line. And let's just drag it up a bit. Also, I want to drag it to the sides, making the flower a little wider. Just like that. I don't want to make it too obvious, but that's looking good. You can see that's working really, really well. Then the next thing that's bothering me is the color of the foreground. Therefore, let's apply a hue and a saturation adjustment layer. Here I want to specifically target those flowers again. So let's bring up the TK panel plugin. And here I'm using a lights one mask on our saturation layer. Then I am going to use the green tones and bring down the saturation. This is not doing that much, so let's also go into the yellows and bring down the saturation here as well. That's working really, really good. Of course, I want to keep the colors for the background, so I need to adjust the mask. I'm doing that by using a black brush, just brushing over the background. Now the colors in the foreground look much more natural. And at that point, I am pretty much done with the editing. So I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.